So one of the questions that I are actually numerous questions that come up is, have been around basic income and whether we think the CERB will transition into a basic income. And uh, I, I'll just, before I ask you to respond to that, I just wanna say that it was a wonderful experience to collaborate with Joanne Roberts, who is the interim leader for the Green Party of Canada. And we both wrote an op-ed together that was published in the Toronto Star mm -hmm. uh, in support of a guaranteed livable income or a basic income. And uh, I think it's one of the things that makes me really proud that Greens have advocated strongly for a basic income. And I was proud to say in the last provincial election, uh, the Green Party of Ontario put forward a platform that had fully costed out what a basic income would look like in Ontario, which, which was you know, I think quite the accomplishment. And uh, I, I, but I do think it would be most effective if it was done at the federal level with the support of the provinces so that all Canadians could access it and we would ensure that you know, there's a floor that nobody goes below anywhere in this country. But exactly. what are your thoughts? What are the conversations in Ottawa about uh, transitioning CERB potentially into a basic income or a guaranteed livable income? Well, I mean, not it's not directly like no one's really saying that specifically that will the CERB transition, although that's a good question for me to ask is, it, you know, is this the time to do it? Because we were certainly having this conversation pre-COVID-19, really kind of pushing the, a lot of our NDP colleagues as well were pushing this idea. But I think now that we've seen some of these programs you know, in action and how difficult the patchwork has been to roll out, how much, you know, need for clarity there has been. It's been very confusing to navigate these systems that even within Service Canada, you know, across across the country with other MPs, I think we've noticed that perhaps if we had a guaranteed livable income or a universal basic income, that this would have been a lot easier to deal with. And so I think it's opened people's minds up. So if we were ever going to have it in Canada, I think this would be the time. Um, and I'm just as hopeful for pharmacare as 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 an as yes. a concept as well. So for me to see those two be become imp implemented in Canada would just be incredible. And you know, again, if there's if there's positive things that we can get out of something like this, it's that we have opened people's minds and they they can see the merit in these kinds of programs. So I will certainly be asking, you know. What is, what's the, you know, taking the temperature of parliament, what are we thinking here? Can this roll into something that's that's universal and guaranteed, you know, around year round, regardless of the pandemic or not, because there are just so many positive spinoffs to this. I think of so many examples when I'm dealing with constituents, hearing some of their stories and thinking, wow, if we only had a guaranteed livable income right now, this wouldn't be an issue, you would be okay. And that's really what we want. I would love to see Canadians, Breathe a sigh of relief financially. Um, we know there would be positive mental health spinoffs. Um, there'd be so many things that would just be stress relievers for Canadians. And so I think that, as I said, it's not that it's it's in a universal or, or in a unanimous consent motion currently or anything like that on the table as far as legislation, but it's certainly there are whispers in the wings of Parliament. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> certainly have support from the GPO.